Welcome everyone to the Cyberpunk News Online Cybercast. I know we have not done one of these for quite some time. Been a hot minute, uh, but we're going to try to uh, start doing these on the semi-regular. And I have a wonderful guest um, who I will introduce in just a moment. I'm very, very excited. I've been wanting to talk to her for quite some time, but just some quick house cleaning at the very uh, start. Uh, for those of you live in chat, welcome, and uh, welcome to those uh, watching on YouTube in the future, or listening, I should say. Uh, for those of you currently in live chat, uh, feel free to tag me if you have any further questions, and I will try to get them to our guest as uh, soon as uh, we get to that point. Um, if you like this and you want uh, more, we have a plethora of interviews via email uh, on the website uh, at uh, cyberpunk-news.online. Uh, we have a lot of uh, virtual photography folks uh, with a lot of examples of their art. And in fact, next week, our newest community interview uh, is... Uh, is going to be a very, very special person. I don't want to spoil it. He's a non, not suitable for work of uh, virtual photographer for 2077. Um, and I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, very, very insightful interview. So keep an eye on that for tomorrow. Uh, generally, every Sunday is when a new community interview goes up. So, uh, without further ado, again, if you have any uh, questions in uh, live chat, again, welcome everyone here. Certainly uh, tag us. Yes, hello, YouTube in the future. <laughs> and our guest, uh, frankly, in my view, she needs no introduction, but let me give uh -huh. her one anyway. Uh, her name is Lucy J. Robin, and before someone is saying, oh my god, Gothic, you are uh, doxing her, no, that is literally <laughs> her name on the socials, Lucy J. Robin. Uh, I, I, or to her good friends like me, LJR, but, you know, <laughs> well, but I, uh, but uh, let, let, let's move on from that. Um, uh, humor aside, though, uh, I encountered Lucy while I was scrolling for Cyberpunk News to post on the uh, news site, and I came upon her first video of her first time playing Cyberpunk 2077, um, and I watched it, I became immediately hooked. Uh, she is such a charismatic, wonderful uh, streamer, very interactive. She has a great community. Um, and uh, as a side note, uh, I could just listen to her accent all day. So <laughs> that, 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 that's an extra bonus. So uh, welcome, Lucy J. Robin. Thank you so much. I'm glad we don't have the cameras on because I'm blushing. <laughs> That was a oh. very nice introduction. Thank you. Um, just to be clear, Lucy J. Robin is not my real name. You're not doxing me, don't worry. It is an online, online nickname only. <laughs> <laughs> now you spoiled it. I know, sorry. I just wanted to <laughs> don't up pull the, the curtain back this quickly, Lucy J. Robin. <laughs> Come on. You're already, you're already giving away all our trade secrets. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so, uh, if I uh, if I recall correctly, you are in Northern Ireland. Yes. Well, I'm from Northern Ireland, yeah, from but I actually live in England now. Yeah. So, uh, give us a little, uh, yeah, give us a little uh, background. You know where you grew up. Uh, you know, you know your your family situation and sure. uh, how how is it over across the pond? Sure. Yes. Yeah, so I am. Um, well, it's complicated. I, I was born in England, but my whole family is from Northern Ireland. And uh, when my parents split up, my mum took me and my sister back to Northern Ireland. So I've, I lived there from when I was about nine, ten. Um, very quickly picked up the accent because I used to have a very English accent. And if you go to Northern Ireland with an English accent, you get relentlessly bullied. So I picked up a Northern Irish accent very quickly. <laughs> and uh, yeah, then I moved back over to England for university and just ended up staying here. I live in a city called Newcastle upon Tyne now, which is about as north as you can go in England. And yeah, I've been living here for about 10 years. Excellent. And uh, before we continue, uh, for my longtime listeners, uh, sorry, folks, uh, it's, I'm a, uh, Peter, uh, a.k.a. Gothic Wizard, is a little rusty. 
Um, I know I always like to start about what our adult beverages are for this interview. Uh, oh. Lucy, please tell us what we're drinking. So I have a glass of Sauvignon Blanc white wine with a one big ice cube in it topped up with a uh, lemon flavored tonic water. So we're being very fancy. Yeah, it is quite fancy. Yeah, but nice. it's a really it's my favorite. Go- it's my favorite bottle of wine. And I saw it on offer today. So I thought I'll grab one. And for this, because of this very special occasion, I'm so glad to got you. I cracked open my last secret stash of Sam Adams Winter Lager, which oh, I'm yeah. not making anymore. So for you, girl, cheers. Cheers, cheers. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm excited. Oh, as I am. So, um, so it's interesting you say that about uh, how you got bullied because of your accent. <laughs> uh, a lot of us over here on this side of the pond... Um, we don't really hear a lot about that. We think, oh, you know, Northern Ireland, they, they, they've come to, uh, you know, mutually, you know, they're not blowing each other up anymore. So yeah. th- things yeah. are things are pretty decent, but it doesn't sound like that's the reality on the ground. Well, I think, you know, I was 10 when I moved over and it's just kids being kids really, isn't it? So I went to an all girls school where there wasn't that many people in the school. So getting somebody new was like a big deal anyway. And for, you know, kids just pick on anything they can get their hands on, really. And that was the obvious target. (laughs) So um, I think I had a bit of a Northern Irish twang anyway, because obviously both my parents are from Northern Ireland and they, you know, taught me how to speak. So I I had a little bit, but uh, it definitely I definitely changed not not consciously, but my voice changed so much when I moved to Northern Ireland. But I feel like I'm a bit of a magpie for accents, to be honest, like. I've been in Newcastle, like I said, for about 10 years now. I definitely sound a bit more Geordie, Northern, whatever. I say words that I didn't say when I was in Northern Ireland. So I just pick up different things everywhere I go. And, you know, people in Northern Ireland now think I sound English again, which obviously is not true. So, <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, one could make the argument that uh, isn't that pretty na- natural human tendency when we move to a new region where there's a new specific dialect or or and accent. I think so. I think people pick I, it up over eventually. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And even, you know, I have since starting, you know, this online journey of streaming and everything, I have friends in America and my good friend Brett, who I do my own podcast with, he's from Texas. And now I catch myself saying y'all. And I'm, I don't know, where's that <laughs> Oh, <from>? my goodness. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> so even that we pick we pick the stuff up pick stuff up off each other like that but then there's people like my dad who's from Northern Ireland but has lived in England since he was 18. He still has the strongest Northern Irish accent going like he's never ever let it go. So I guess it depends on the person as well. Yeah, uh indeed. So, um f- how did you get into gaming? What's, uh, well, first of all, what was your, the very first game you ever played and how, uh, how did you get into it? The very first game I ever can recall playing. I mean, I've, I've played games since I can remember. Um, I think it started off watching my dad play games. I remember I used to watch my dad play all the Tomb Raider games and I couldn't, I couldn't do them myself. So I would just watch him play. Um, I also have this very vivid memory of when I was quite young being around at my next door neighbor's house and they were playing something scary like the original Resident Evil or something and uh, I was so scared I had to run home like crying. <laughs> um, the first game I recall playing myself, I'm not sure, you know, I, I'm my, the earliest ones I remember playing would be like Spyro the dragon and crash bandicoot okay um i remember very clearly when my dad took me to buy my playstation one and it was just the best day ever when we got this ridiculously large casing to put it in and you know to store all the games um and then other than that i had playstation 2 i had loads of different game boys when i moved into nintendo um, the gamecube was a highlight for me i absolutely loved the gamecube and pokemon coliseum on that um, I think like some of my favorite gaming memories is just, you know, when Game Boys didn't even have a backlight on the screen. Yes. So you yes. had to you had to have a plug a light into the top, which was like bendy and stretch over to light the screen up. And you could plug your Game Boy into your friend's Game Boy to play games against them. And that was just 
the height of entertainment when I was, you know, eight, nine, ten years old. But um, I, I definitely, when I moved to uni, I, I stopped gaming as much. I had an Xbox 360, which I played Call of Duty on a lot when I was at school. But when I moved away to uni, I kind of stopped that quite for quite some time. But then on the first week of lockdown, which was, you know, nearly three years ago now, I bought myself an Xbox One so I could play Warzone, which was brand new at this time with my two friends from work. And we played that, you know, almost every single day during lockdown because we got sent home um, to work from home. And then I started playing The Witcher 3, which got me back into single player games and then stuff like Red Dead Redemption 2 and Elden Ring. And, you know, most recently Cyberpunk, which is why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So you said you saw your dad play Tomb Raider. Yeah. Is this Tomb Raider 1? It must have been, yeah. Whatever the oldest one was. She had, you know, like the pixelated triangle tits. And oh, my God. <laughs> and, I, it's you know. funny you say that. I just, uh, while I was, I don't forget where I was. It was either uh, a gaming website or Twitter or something. But I was, I was at some, some uh, site and someone posted a Tomb Raider 1 screen cap. And I was like, oh. oh, my God. They did a side-by-side mm -hmm. -side of Tomb Raider 1 and the latest Tomb Raider, Laura Croft. Yeah. And I was like, oh, my God. This is what passed for. Yeah. Oh, this is amazing. Like, mm -hmm. like so many teenage boys were simping for her. Yeah. And, and I it's was just like, absurd. And at the time, we thought it looked <laughs> so good. Right? Right? <laughs> it was like, yeah, it's like. All five polygons for her breasts. And I'm like, oh my god. It, I would love to take like some footage of Cyberpunk 2077 back to the 90s and yeah. just blow people's yes. minds. Like, this is what you have look, to look forward to, you fuckers. Yeah. <laughs> While they, and, then, and then Lucy will make them all cry. Yeah. <laughs> um, to them, that would be like almost magic. That would that 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 be yeah. that would be witchcraft. Just, oh my god, burn <laughs> this woman at the stake. <laughs> um, so, so what um, what attracted you to game? What, what what hooked you? Like, hey, this is a hobby. I you know I want to get invested in. I want to spend time in. in gaming in general. Yeah, yeah. I think I've always just been into like my tech and games ever since I was young but what got me back into it like I said was lockdown and it was just the sense of like community which I think I was craving a lot during lockdown um I lived by myself during lockdown in this like horrible little flat which I'm so happy to be out of now but it was just the interaction I used to play a lot of um you know uh, multiplayer games and getting off of work and then just being able to go and talk to your friends, play a game with your friends. Like that was a big thing for me, the community. I think that's what attracted me to Twitch so much as well is that you get to do something and experience this really cool story, but also build kind of friendships and have these interactions every day as well. I think it, that's what I like the most about gaming is the interaction side of things. Like I, I very rarely just sit and play a game by myself now. Like I'm more addicted to the community aspect of it. Uh, by the way, in chat, Faze says you're a witch. FYI. She's a witch. Yeah, yes. <laughs> that's fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how did the how did it go from hey, I, you know, I like playing these games; these are fun. To hey, I want to stream on Twitch. How did how did that transition happen? So um, during lockdown. Like I said, I was doing a lot of gaming and I was living in Newcastle by myself and I wanted to, I needed to go back and visit my mum who lived in Northern, who lives in Northern Ireland. Uh, so I went back to stay with her for about two to three weeks and I, I don't have any games consoles or anything there. So I was kind of craving my gaming because I got so used to doing it pretty much all night, every night. Uh, so I started watching people on Twitch. Okay. And I made some really good girlfriends during this time, one of which, uh, you know, is my friend Shannon, who's one of my mods. I don't know if you've seen her in my chat ever, uh, but I've, I, I found her 
her Twitch channel and she was streaming Call of Duty. And at this point, I didn't have any girlfriends who played Call of Duty. So I was so excited. Um, so during those two to three weeks, I would just watch her stream and a couple of other girls streams. And uh, kind of this was probably like November, December time uh, in 20, 2020. Um, and I just kind of was like, you know what? I could do that. I could stream. And what do I have to lose? I mean, I'm stuck in my house all night. This is when we weren't even allowed to like leave the house or anything. Unless you're Boris uh, Johnson. Yeah, unless you're, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't the prime minister at this time, so I had to stay in my house. And um, so, yeah, I got back from Northern Ireland and I said to myself, like, my New Year's resolution is going to be to try streaming. And I did my first stream on the 13th of January, 2021, and never looked back. Yeah, it was just awesome and it went it went quite well for me relatively quickly um in terms of building up a community and stuff i think you know during that time it was peak lockdown it was winter as well so it wasn't summer lockdown which was glorious you know you could just sit outside in the garden all day it was winter lockdown where it was dark all the time and it was cold and you couldn't leave the house and there was nothing to do so twitch was really booming at this time and that's when a lot of people kind of blew up on twitch as such right. um and yeah, I just loved it. And I've made some really, really good friends. Shannon's still one of, you know, she's a really close friend of mine. And I've, you know, in the, in the past year, like 2021 was kind of building that and meeting people. And then 2022 for me was when I actually got to meet all of these people and travel with them and stuff. And it was just, it's just been awesome. Like, if, and I know streaming's not for everyone, but I do feel like everyone should have a go at Twitch and, you know, becoming part of a community because it, it is, it's been a lot for me. Okay, um, fair. So now I'm going to put, put uh, my, my new friend uh, LJR on the spot. <laughs> Favorite three games you've ever played? Favorite In three no particular games order. I've no particular ever order. Ever played. Okay. Um, one of them would definitely be uh, The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, which was on the okay. Nintendo Wii. Okay, interesting. So, that's probably the first ever, I, I guess it's not technically open world, but it felt like, a, to me at the time, it felt like the first ever game that I had played that was like this massive, open, vast world that you could explore and you could just run around on your horse for a bit if you wanted to. It wasn't just, you know, completely linear and it was gorgeous. Yeah. And I loved the, you know, the Nintendo Wii was such a novelty at the time where you like swung the controller to swing your sword and stuff. And it was just so fun. Um, so that that definitely has a place in my heart. If they ever remastered that for the Switch, I would be so happy. Um, secondly, I mean, my favorite of all time is Witcher 3, for sure. Um, it was just... I knew that was coming. Yeah, yeah. That we'll was talk obvious. about that a little later, but yes, yes. <laughs> Which, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll save, I'll save that for when we talk about Witcher 3, but... Thirdly, I don't know, thirdly. Because uh, it's hard to not just say whatever game you're playing right now, because at the Indeed. moment, like at, at the moment, Cyberpunk is like consuming me. Um, but of all time, you know, all the Call of Duty games and Warzone as like a franchise have been the most consistent games throughout my life. I don't really play them much now because I'm much more into single player games at the moment, but certainly throughout my teenage years and throughout a lot of lockdown call of duty was just so much fun okay that's fair what about you what's your three? Oh, fuck um so you put me on the spot and i just oh wow okay i see how the, <laughs> i see okay okay well what, what once we start talking about river okay okay i, I see I, <laughs> I i see how this is all going to play out okay okay um okay ljr uh let's see here <laughs> um uh vampire the masquerade bloodlines funny that you we talked about that because that yeah. was hugely influential influential uh, to me. And when you get to play it, you will understand. Um, okay. I don't want to spoil it. I don't want to talk too much in depth about it. But the writing and the voice acting, mm. uh, the story, uh, is amazing. Um, it suffers the same, I will say, in fairness. The first two acts, awesome, amazing. The yeah. last third act, uh, unfortunately... Kind, 
kind of has a cyberpunky kind of ending where they were cr- t- crunched for time. Yeah. So it basically becomes a hack and slash by the latter half of the third act. I see. Um, okay. Which is unfortunate. You could tell they had more planned, but they were. There's a whole big story. If you ever want to Google it, there's a whole story about the production of Bloodlines. Uh, okay. It's very fascinating. It, it, it's a. It, it's a, a great. Uh, it's a great example of how uh, crunching developers, and we just keep repeating this. Like they, ne- no one ever learns. You know, I know. You, 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 you're right, exactly. You, you know, and we're talking something uh, a game that came out around 2004 ish. You know, and here we are in the 2020s, and we're having the exact same problem. It, it just, yeah. it's it's frustrating to say the least. Uh, but but uh, but it has a lot more pros and cons, and I I really feel that was definitely again I'm going in no particular order. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't want to say that's my number one, but that's definitely in one of my top three. Uh, Bloodlines. Um, the ball. I'll put this as a series because it really it is yeah. the individual game, the chapters, the Baldur's Gate series. Okay, I've never played any of these. Um, that was hugely... Um, and... If we're doing top ten, I will say <laughs> Cyberpunk is definitely... Or even top five, I would say de- Cyberpunk is in there. But if we're yeah. going all-time, uh, most influential... Mm-hmm. Um, I will have to say... The game that got me into gaming... Which is not interesting. It's not. It's not. Uh, it's the very first game I ever played. And if it wasn't for this, my interest in computers and gaming probably would have happened far later, if at all. Mm-hmm. Um, Flight Simulator for the Apple IIe. Oh, nice! <laughs> that was the first game I ever played. Flight Simulator. Unreal. I was amazed, and I was like, mm. "Oh my god, this is awesome!" Yeah. I got to get me, I got to get me a computer. And that's what Amazing. got me into it. So just, I mean, is it a, you know, I mean, obviously like today's Microsoft Flight Simulator completely crushes it on every level, mm-hmm. needless to yeah. say. But just for, uh, that's what got me into the, on the path I'm on and made partially maybe who I am today. I got to give mm-hmm. it props. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Um... Uh, yeah, yeah, Soggy's like, I wouldn't have guessed that one. Yeah, no, no one would have guessed that one, Soggy. Don't feel bad. Uh, uh, I'm not suggesting you get go get an M- Apple II emulator and go play it. Would not suggest that, but... No, it's just, a nostalgic thing, exactly, maybe. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, so, let's, let, now let's flip the script. What is the number one most disappointing game, biggest letdown you've ever played? Oh... Um, only one comes to mind, and it's exactly what M. Jag said in the chat. There, it's uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Really? Only because I really wanted to like it, and I just didn't get it. It didn't grip me. I feel like I should give it another go because when I was younger, I used to really like the Assassin's Creed games. Mm-hmm. And I, I, to be honest, I don't know which one it was. Like people ask me which ones have you played, I've got no idea which ones I've played. I just remember playing them, but um. I picked up Assassin's Creed Valhalla and I don't know, I didn't like the controls of the game. I didn't get the story. I didn't understand the combat and it like it used to glitch a lot for me as well. Um, so I find that quite disappointing because I really thought I would love it. Mm-hmm. But I do also feel like I should maybe give it another go. Because a lot of people I know really love it and think that I would love it as well. And there's like an Ireland uh, DLC or something, I think. So it would be rude not to try that. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Um, And what one game do you feel was the most influential, either uh, from an artistic level, uh, emotional level, something along those lines? influential like to me personally or yes, on a greater personally. scale to you personally um i mean it has to be witcher 3 again i'm sorry i keep saying that no, but no, in, term, in terms in terms of like in terms of 
what has happened in my life and the people I've met and some of the experiences I've had on the back of playing a game mm -hmm. it's got to be Witcher 3 like considering all the opportunities I've had from streaming like my stream was doing okay but as soon as I started playing Witcher 3 and really loving it it's you know everything started to go really well and I made some really good friends and you know have been invited to you know CDPR events and Netflix events and it's I started my podcast because of playing that game so it's Witcher 3 has had the the biggest effect on my life personally um I saw somebody M Jags wrote ER there which I think means Elden Ring um which I think has been certainly influential on me as a person because I had to change <laughs> had to change my whole attitude to gaming well, it wasn't that I had to change my attitude. It was that I had to learn to adopt a different play style in a game that I didn't think required that kind of mentality. And it was all about mindset, exactly, M Jags, yeah. And I was not expecting that going into Elden Ring. Like, I had heard that Souls games were hard and it was going to be tasking, but never... Like, if you had told me I would have been on stream you know, nearly every day for a week, staying up till 2 a.m. trying to kill one boss. Like, mm -hmm. it, it completely changed my gaming mentality and it was a wild ride and I absolutely fucking loved it. So Elden Ring, Witcher 3, for sure, for, diff for very different reasons, but both of them have been incredibly influential. So let's, let us uh, let's talk about the elephant in the room, Witcher 3. Yeah. Um, let's 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 just dive right in and uh, get this out of the way before we talk about cyberpunk. Mm -hmm. So, what attracted you? Did, first of all, did you play the first two, and what um, what got you into that that game series as a whole? So, I have not played Witcher one or two. I do. I've seen gameplay of them and stuff, and. I sort of feel like games like that, people love them if they played them when they came out. This is why I'm so excited that they're remaking The Witcher 1, because I would love to know the story and everything, but I can't I can't get away with old janky games unless I played them when they came out and that you have that nostalgic attachment to them. But I would love the story, like I said. So Witcher 1 and 2 is, you know, in my Steam library, unplayed, zero hours. Um... But Witcher 3, so I watched my first experience of The Witcher as a whole was The Witcher Netflix series. So that came out, God, four, four years ago. And I remember the person that I watched it with was like, oh, this apparently this is going to be like the next Game of Thrones. So let's watch it. And I watched <laughs> it and I had no idea what was going on. But I enjoyed it. I was like, okay, I'm enjoying this, but I don't, you know, the timeline thing. I just right. it completely, completely went over my head at the time. But I, I enjoyed it. I like the story. I like the outfits. I like magic, all that shit. So I enjoyed it. But then I started streaming and I was playing Call of Duty all the time, Warzone or whatever. And I, I think I remember saying on stream one day, you know, I like watching these other streamers. There's a girl called Meg Mage that I watch still. A girl called Basic Wit Girl, who's you know I consider her a friend now, um, who always played single player games, and I was like, I want to play a single player game, but I was nervous because you know when you play multiplayer games on stream, you have that safety net of always having somebody to talk to, and it would never have that awkward silence, which you know you don't have if you're playing a single player game. Um, and someone was like, Oh well, you watched Witcher recently, like why don't you try Witcher three? So I was like, Okay, I'll try it, and. Yeah, just kind of instantly fell in love with it and loved playing as Geralt, loved the whole story, um, which I think is quite different from Witcher 1 and 2, so I don't really feel like I've missed out in terms of story uh, for Witcher 3. But yeah, I finished my first playthrough of the game and was, you know, kind of heartbroken when it finished and did both <laughs> of the DLCs. And then I went and rewatched. The Witcher Netflix and it made so much more sense to me after Indeed. I played the game Indeed. which I think you know it's not a, it's not a good thing to say about a TV show like you shouldn't have to play the game as like a prerequisite for a show to be good but um, it made so much more sense to me after knowing the world a bit more and yeah I loved it and 
you know, the game, I've played the game a couple times through since then. And I think it's replayability, if that's a word, is very good. It's kind of like Cyberpunk, obviously, that was made by the same people. Um, you can go through the game and play in a totally different kind of way and build your character differently. And, it, you know, it's easy to do a second playthrough and experience the whole game in a whole different way, which I think speaks volumes to how they've made it. Um, I don't know, in terms of the story, I think The Witcher as a whole is just such a great universe your main character is, you know, just this kind of broody, <laughs> um, grumpy guy, but his supporting cast as such is just so rich and full of personality. There's, you know, several characters that you can relate with, I think, and different storylines. It's all about found family, which was, which felt quite relevant with what we were trying to do on Twitch, you know, find and build a community it felt like it all just added up and it just made sense to be playing that game. I'm going to say something very controversial. Go for it. You don't like Witcher 3. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm playing it right now, in fact. <laughs> I was ready uh, for you to be like, I think that game's awful. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, uh, I prefer the actor who plays Dandelion on the show versus in the game. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, Joey Beatty's great. He's amazing. I think he's awesome. Toss nice. a coin I, to your Witcher. Come on. Come yeah. on. Joey Beatty is amazing. I, I fully respect that, that choice. I don't really have any great personal attachment to uh, the voice actor of Dandelion. You know, no. it's not like he's not like Doug Cockle or anything, is he? So no. No. As much as I like the the voice and the character in the game, I think Joey Beatty's so good. And you know, right, the songs that he he writes are amazing as well. And I saw him. I sat like two feet away from him last oh my year. God. At, at the, yeah, at the premiere of uh, Blood Origin. So I sat so close to him. I was like, Joey, Joey, Joey. But the girls, the girls beside me were like Joey Beatty stands, and they were screaming at him. <laughs> it was, it was oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, well. If I was sitting that close to him, I'd probably be screaming like a little girl to him. Too. No, I'm, not, I'm not gonna so lie. Funny. I'm not gonna lie. It was. It was lie. great. Yeah, he was a great sport. Yeah. That that's awesome. Did you actually get to talk to him at all or no? I didn't. So um, at the, this was the Blood Origin premiere in London right. that was in December, which I was about to say last month, but it's fucking March. So it was three months ago. Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. Um, and all of the main cast of Blood Origin were there and Joey Beatty was there also. And they did a QA and a um, before we got to watch the episodes, but it wasn't like an Ask the Audience thing. It was just questions that were asked by uh, the host, which is a guy called mm -hmm. Ali Plum, um, who works for the, the BBC here. And it was good. Most of the cast did stay to watch the episodes with us, but Joey and Minnie Driver both left, so we didn't get a chance to chat to them. But I got a chance to speak with a lot of um, the Blood Origin cast, and also there was some of the main Witcher cast there as well. The actress um, Cassie Clare, who plays Francesca, not Francesca, um, Philippa, Oh, okay. And, okay. Um, you know, she she's only just shown up in series two. Right, right. So she hasn't got a chance to shine yet. Um, right. The actress, um, Anna Schaffer, was there who plays Triss. I was too scared to say hello to her. Oh, my God. Um, I, she, I know. <laughs> she, she embodies Triss so good. I, re I think she's so good. And you know what? When you see meet, meet these people in real life, I don't know if it's just because I'm quite tall, but they're all tiny but they're still so intimidating. Like she is so small. And I almost and I spit just... my beer out on my microphone. <laughs> That's hilarious. And, uh, you know, I feel stupid cause I'm this big, tall person. I'm like, I can't go and say hello to her. <laughs> this little tiny <laughs> woman in the corner. But, um, yeah, I mean, all the people that I spoke to were, you know, very, very lovely people and so excited about the Witcher. And it's, it's nice. Everybody, um, everybody is always so ready to talk about the Witcher, which I like. Brian Somebody's says, asked how tall is Lucy? Tall. <laughs> Makes yourself sound seven feet tall. No, I'm I'm five foot nine, but I wear, you know, if I'm going out, I'll wear heels. So I'm like six foot one, six foot two. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, 
So, so okay, so let, so this okay, let's get to the second elephant out of the room since you brought this topic up because you've just introduced a new elephant in the room. Mm. Blood Origins. Oh, yeah. I don't get all the hate. Um, oh. now, yeah. is it oh my god, this is the best this is in my new top 20 uh, shows of <laughs> all time? Absolutely not. Um, on the flip side, I personally don't think it was as bad as a lot. I, I think people went in with a lot of preconceived notions, a lot mm-hmm. of this is what's going to, this is how it's going to be. This is going to be the best thing since sliced bread, you know, that, that they did. And when it turned out to be a high average show, they just totally trashed on it. Um, yeah. and I think, I think, I think it's a, you know, uh, and a, I think it's a high average show. Like if, if this was a test in school, I'd give mm-hmm. it about a 75%. That's fair enough. Yeah. I think. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, a, a solid C, uh, I, I, I don't, it didn't break any ground. I mean, I, I really think their whole goal of this was to plant seeds for season three. I think oh, that's absolutely. It. And, yeah. and I, I. And so they weren't trying to break new ground or be revolutionary with the show. I think it it was a means to an end. Now, mm-hmm. could they have executed some of it better? One hundred ten percent. I'm not. I'm not defending it. I'm not saying again. It's it's Shakespearean level <laughs> writing or, or or plot. I'm not saying that. But it did its job for what it was meant to be. An ancillary story, mostly detached, that does plant some seeds, so it, which will get the payoff in season three. And I think yeah. if you went in it with that mindset, it was a fine show. It was it was fine. Was it great? Again, great or amazing? Not at all. But was it fine? Sure. And I I, I just don't get the hate. I really don't get the 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 animosity toward it. Yeah. I think the the Witcher fandom in general is going towards this kind of just very hateful um, at any chance they can get. And yeah, no, I totally agree. Like I I enjoyed the show and I had good fun. And I thought the casting, you know, the one thing I will always praise the Witcher shows for is their casting. Because I think they nail it every single time. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, I agree with you that the show was not groundbreaking, but it was good fun. But the people that hate on it are we're gonna hate on it anyway. Like the the level of hatred that people have for the Witcher Netflix is beyond belief. And you know, we, I've I've talked about this so much on podcasts and stuff, but it's just it's just sad. Like I just think if you don't like something, you can just go and watch something else. <laughs> yeah, there's no it's hate. Yeah. Hate watching is yeah. the most futile thing. It really is, and then it just spews over. Like when I went to that uh that um the premiere i then started getting hit on twitter for going to the premiere and i just thought grow up <laughs> <laughs> haters gonna hate haters they gonna, are they're gonna hit so um, yeah i'm just i'm over the hatred i just yes. uh they want people to go and enjoy whatever they like because when you enjoy something and when you love something it's such a great feeling and i just think why don't you go find something you love and your life will just yes. be infinitely better <laughs> yeah indeed as someone who's been online since the early 80s let me just say something about haters Haters is just another term for fan. Because really, what Mm -hmm. do haters do? They follow you. They stalk you online. They comment on you all the time. They, 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 you know, they know exactly what you're doing, who you're talking to, what your opinions are. I mean, really, what is that a definition of? That's a definition of of an obsessed fan. So really, haters are just fans, really. (laughs) <laughs> and I say I that agree. to my haters, and you can imagine how well that goes over. But, <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's that, that's. I, I figure if more people look at haters like that, it, they they just take it, take them with a grain of salt. Is what you should do with them. Yeah. No, I agree. So, um, so, okay. Um, then, um, I mean, I didn't. I don't want to turn this into a Witcher uh, t- uh, talk, <laughs> but uh, let, let's just do it. Um, Yen, Yen, are you Team Yen or are we uh, Team Triss? Uh, I'm personally Team Yen forever and ever. As much as I love Triss in the TV show, I think I like Triss, Witcher Netflix Triss, more than Witcher Three Triss. Why is that? Uh, 
I just, Witcher 3 Triss just comes across quite annoying to me as much as I, because I think, I feel like I look at it as, as an outsider's perspective. Like, I feel like the game really wanted you to like Triss and they were really? doing the end. Yeah, I feel when I was watching or when I play it, I feel like you meet Triss first and, you know, Triss is so fun and, um, then you meet Yen and Yen's just constantly like, we have to do this, we have to do this, we have to find Siri. And she's just, you know, she's got her mission involved, whereas Triss is just, you know, more laid back, I guess. But uh, for me, it's always Yen. It's got to be Yen. That's fair. That's fair. Um, all right. So now let's get into the nitty gritty. Cyberpunk. Mm. Yeah. Uh, did you... Um, were you following it? Uh, uh, were, you, were you following the hype train leading up to it? Let's start there. Up to its release? Yes. No, I actually had no idea. So this would have been like before lockdown. So this is when I was in my like gaming hiatus. So I had no idea about game what games were coming out or anything like this. But I do remember a girl at work who I sat beside and she was an apprentice and I was kind of mentoring her a little bit. And she was watching the trailer for it. And I was like, what is that? And she go, I remember her telling me, it's this game called Cyberpunk that's coming out. It's been getting made for like 10 years and it's finally coming out. I've pre-ordered it. It's coming out in like eight months or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, cool. That, that sounds good. I think it was that trailer where it was just like, it was just Keanu Reeves. Uh, Johnny. And... Um, <laughs> It wasn't, it wasn't like a big full trailer. It was just right. like him. And it was right. like, he's in the game. And I was like, okay, cool. That, that looks cool. And this girl was telling me all about how it's going to be, you know, the most detailed, oh, you know, it's going to be like, it's going to be like real life. It's going to be, oh, you know, the most immersive city, <laughs> whatever, blah, blah, blah. Groundbreaking on every level. Exactly. Yeah. And yep. she was so excited for it. And I was just like, that's cool. You know, I haven't gamed in a long time. Um, and to be honest, I, I wasn't following it. No. And I remember... I don't even really remember when I, when it came out. I don't. I think I will have caught you know the tail end of things maybe not going quite as they were supposed to. Right. But I wasn't. I wasn't fully involved in in gaming or anything then, so I I wasn't on top of it as I would be now. So what? Um, so you really weren't following it. No. For the most part, to its lead up. So what got you to say, "Hey, I want to check this out." So, um, last summer in July, I got invited to the 20 years community party at CDPR's head office in Warsaw. Okay, everyone who's listening, uh, either currently or in the future on YouTube, let me just say, clearly Lucy has contacts. I'm just going to leave that at that. She's getting invited to all these fucking places. You and I, who are listening, we're never going to get fucking invited. Well, they're not going, definitely not going to invite me because there's, there's a few people at CDPRs. You know, I'm a little too fucking honest. So, you know, just, uh, listen, I just, I just email people. I'm just in people's inboxes all the time. Like, hey, I should come to this. I should come to this. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I think. Um, it was July, and um, I literally got the invite about five days before the party, so I had to fucking panic and book flights and hotels and everything. Oh, my God. Um, oh, so this yeah, was, was all on your dime. Oh, yeah, yeah. It wasn't paid for or anything. No, no, no. Oh, I thought, just, like, it, oh, you're a community person. We're going to... It's no, a PR no, no, thing. No, 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 Oh, so no, all these events, it's thing. all on you. Oh, yeah, yeah, fully. Um because the, the party, you did have to apply to go. It wasn't like somebody reached out to me and said, hey, do you want to come to this thing? It was, they put oh. up a tweet being like, um, we're going to host this party for the community. We're inviting a bunch of people, but then we've got X amount of spaces left for people to apply for. So I had to fill out this whole big mm -hmm. form and talk about what, you know, my favorite experience with CDPR something, you know, Witcher. Um, so then I got an email back saying, you know, we've got a space for you and quite a lot of my friends that I met in Amsterdam and everything was going as well. So I met up with them there. But at this time I was very much Witcher and then I was quite involved with the Gwent community as well. I played Gwent for literally about three weeks and then didn't really enjoy it anymore. But I made quite a lot of good friends in the Gwent community who I would see a lot at events like TwitchCon and stuff like that. Okay. 
Um, so I was at the CDPR event and it was quite funny because you you got the CDPR event and you could see the Witcher people and you could see the, the Gwent people and you could see the cyberpunk people. And it was like very clear cut who was in what group. <laughs> and uh, it, cyberpunk had never, ever crossed my mind to play. And when I was at this event, seeing the cyberpunk people and they were in the most amazing cosplays and they were so excited about cyberpunk and we got to see some stuff before it was released i think this was before the big update last summer mm -hmm. they, they showed us some stuff i can't even remember what they showed us now because it made no sense to me as somebody who had never played the game right and the the cyberpunk fans were going crazy and they were you know fucking so excited about this game and it was just infectious so when i got home the steam sale went on and the game went down to like half price or something and i was right. like okay fuck it i'll buy it mm -hmm. um and i'll play it because i was just so intrigued by these super fans um and how much good stuff they had to say about the game and at this point I was about halfway through my Elden Ring playthrough. Mm -hmm. So I just bought the game and was like, Fine, you know, I'll play that when I finished Elden Ring. And <laughs> Elden Ring took me a lot longer to finish than I ever thought it would. But within that time, I watched Edge Runners. And I think at the same time, the big cyberpunk update released, which people were so excited for. And that coincided really well with Edge Runners, and they both did really well. So I was kind of towards the end of my Elden Ring game. I was like, fucking hurry up, man. I just want to play Cyberpunk now. Like, I'm really, really <laughs> intrigued. So um, that's that's what finally got me into it is just seeing, like, actually meeting people who really loved it and being very intrigued. So just uh, as a, as a uh, side note, Elden mm -hmm. Ring. What attracted you? Because I've, I've I've seen people play it, or you know, seen the videos, whatever. I just it just seems like a pretty typical, you know, fantasy medieval hack and slash game. I, I everyone you know everyone was talking about you know for a couple months. That's all anyone was talking about a playing. Yeah. I just didn't see what the attraction was. So sell me on it. What 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 is it about Elden Ring that makes it so special? Have you have you played any Souls games before? No. Yeah, so I hadn't played any Souls games either, but I just knew that they were, like, notoriously really difficult. Mm -hmm. um, but I agree, like, before I played it, I just thought, okay, it's just some kind of... Medieval, I guess, is the word, yeah, but I wasn't sure what the vibe was. But to be honest, I just kind of fell into it. Like, I had just finished God of War 2018 when it released on PC. Okay. I had just finished my playthrough of that, which I enjoyed, but I wasn't, like... I think that's my, probably my gaming hot take is that i didn't love god of war 2018 um but i was just kind of stuck with what to play next and then i was looking at steam and elden ring was like the big seller so i thought fuck it i'll try it um and yeah I, I, it's it's just so di it's so so different to games like the witcher and cyberpunk which are very story heavy like there is a big there is a lot of lore in Elden Ring, like uh, George R.R. R. Martin from Game of Thrones was hired to kind of build the world for them or yeah. alongside them. I remember reading and, that. Yeah, Instead yeah, of writing his own books, he's writing for everyone else. Yeah, exactly. But yes. Like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, so, I, I mean, I, I don't, I certainly don't wish it, just very quickly, I, I certainly don't wish upon this. I am not wishing him any ill, but I <laughs> truly believe he is going to pass on before he finishes his book series. Yeah, I know. He's working on everything else but his own book series. But I, better, yeah. I digress. I digress. So, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Um, but yeah, Elden Ring, whereas even though there's all the lore there, there's a lot of lore, but you don't really have to keep up with it. It's a very, very different style of game. There's no quest log. There's no mini map or anything. It very much is just exploring, finding bosses. It's all about boss fights. You know, it's just... It's just a challenge, really, and I can't explain why it's so addictive. But, like I said, it's the, the only game that's ever kept me up on stream till two in the morning. Wow, wow. And I'm not, like, I'm a sleepy girl. You know? <laughs> like, usually at 10 p.m. I'm, like, falling asleep at my desk. <laughs> and I just was wired trying to be, and it's funny because, like, the game is very unpredictable as well. Like one 
one round the boss will be really slow and easy on you and then the next round you'll be doing the same things but the boss will just be aggressive and you know i i don't know if it learns what you're doing but it certainly adapts and it's just a really interesting game to play and it's also a really really fun game to watch people stream because there's thousands of different ways to play the game and build your character and you know, some people do these insane challenge runs where they don't level their character at all and that would then drive me because if I'm like, well, I'm level 90 and I can't even beat this boss, but your man on Twitch can beat him level 1. Like, it must be possible. And <laughs> it's just uh, addictive. And yes, yeah, stubborn is the right word, MJags. You have to be stubborn to play this game and I am certainly stubborn. Fair enough. So you finished Elden Ring and then you said, okay, now I want to get into Cyberpunk. Yes. So, uh, first impression, first time playing Cyberpunk. First few hours impression. First few hours. I did a Corpo playthrough. I don't know why I picked Corpo. Um, I think initially, I th when I start any new game, I'm always overwhelmed because, you know, you spend so long on one game and then all of a sudden you're uprooted and put into this new world, new controls, new characters, and you have to learn all this new shit. So... I mean, I've I've put 50, 60 hours into the game now and I'm still not familiar with menus and stuff. And I don't... Yeah, Brian just said in the chat, she didn't level up until just before the last mission. Yes. <laughs> I noticed that watching your playthrough. But go ahead. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll bust on you for that little... Uh, that, I know. Little, so, a little bit. Go ahead. Stuff, stuff like that, I just... Yeah, it totally misses me. Menus and stuff. I'm, you know, I'm quite impatient with learning new menus. So... You know, there's so, you know, Cyberpunk is so detailed with the amount of leveling up and updating and upgrading and stuff you can do. But I think the first, my first impression was, I don't remember how I ended my first stream, but I loved Jackie and All right, I P. thought, Jackie. All right, I know, I know. And I knew, I knew that, I knew that was coming. I could just really? tell, but I didn't, I didn't think it would be so, so early in the game. Um, so I was very intrigued. I don't think I even met johnny in my first stream no i wouldn't have met johnny for a long time but uh yeah I, I i really enjoyed it and obviously it's gorgeous like it's just one of those games one of the few games i will not use fast travel because i just love driving around mm -hmm. the city mm -hmm. so um what what event uh, either a character, a, a mission, uh, just a, a combat. What, what in your first playthrough? What was the one thing that you decide that hooked you? That says, okay, yes, I absolutely want to play this game again. Um, I think it was. I think it's a, probably a boring answer, but it was the heist. Like the heist job was just insane. It felt like a, you know, a movie. When you're, I think it's from it's the whole getting jumbled with my words here it's the different types of game play that you can experience in one job so for example the heist i loved that one moment we were hiding behind that wall as you see um the i get the two arasakas mixed up but you see him kill his dad basically um and it's just so tense and oh, you have to be quiet and mm -hmm. then all of a sudden you hear a t-bug go down and then you have to jump off that building and it's it's just insane like the whole thing and then it end, you know in the car obviously jackie dies and like my emotions were just up and down and after that it kind of concludes you know you're shot in the head and then you get with you get away with takemura and it's just so much to take in but i was like okay i see the story's going somewhere now and i want to know where it goes so that was the moment i decided well i knew that i would be hooked uh brian says lucy mentioned driving i'm not gonna say it okay i will i yeah. will brian <laughs> okay for anyone who hasn't watched and i certainly encourage you um uh to go check lucy's channel i'll she, she at the end end of this I'll, I'll let her uh she can uh promo all her all her socials and we'll do have the links in the description of this video but uh if you watch hers um basically lucy can't drive um <laughs> that's that, that that's basically your takeaway um though i will fun fact she is like a motocross 
racing expert on a cycle. You put her on a motorcycle, she is yeah. just like all pro. Like night and day. You put her in a car, she if there isn't something to hit, she will find a way to hit it. Uh, I, 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 I don't know. understand. I, I don't understand why cycles <laughs> work so much better for her than a car. But um, And it's so funny cute watching her drive because she's literally apologizing to everyone she's running over i love it i love it that's so funny yeah for some reason on the motorbike on jackie's arch i think he calls it um absolute savage couldn't get anywhere without any casualties but um the cars handle horrifically um (laughs) i recently got johnny's porsche Oh my god! Um, you know, it's just horrific. Oh my I god! Got, that I is like a broke for a day and was like, "Fuck, we're not gonna make it." <laughs> I swear, if Porsches drove handled like that in the game, uh, mm-hmm. that company would go out of business. It is like driving <laughs> on an oil slick. That is how yeah, the game so h- car handles in the game. I don't understand it. It's supposed to be a <laughs> high precision sports coupe. And yeah. the, it's like, oh my god, I am driving on an oil slick right now. I don't it's understand. So funny. Yes, it's a great looking car. Amazing, oh, yeah. it's a great car. Johnny's car is the best, but mm-hmm. oh my god, it is horrible to drive. Horrible. Yeah. Uh, and they say, oh yeah, in one of the first two three patches, oh we we adjusted, we fixed the driving. Ah, I think that's debatable. <laughs> I'm going to be yeah. honest. I think that's fucking debatable. <laughs> um and they haven't touched it since which yeah yeah uh mods friends that is that is why we we, we mods that's <laughs> yeah um but i digress um so um now before i jump my question i do want to backtrack a little bit you said you watched uh the edge runners anime yeah uh before you started playing and that's kind of what got you piqued your interest mm-hmm. um We have uh, Faze Leaf asks, uh, so I watched Cyberpunk, uh, and do you think the people in Night City will get a season two of the show? Um, I mean, considering how successful it was, I think they're probably thinking about it. However, I don't know if it would be a continuation of the story that we watched in Edge Runners, or Mm -hmm. whether it would just be a completely new story that's you know that's the beauty of night city is that it's so vast you could have something completely different and just make a whole new story about it and it could be you know a different year or a different Mm -hmm. side of time yeah i i i do think they'll probably do another one but i i don't think it'll be a continuation of the story from edge runners series one i i 150 percent agree uh i think it's going to be like an anthology you know, uh, a season two is going to be in Night City, but it's going to be a whole different group of people in the same yeah. setting, in the same time yeah. period. Uh, oh, cool. Yeah, that'll I, be good. I, I feel that's the... Because you're right. Half of the original characters are dead. So... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm just being honest. You know, yeah. uh, spoiler. Um, yeah, exactly. You know, the half the group dies. Uh, it was a bit of a Rogue One ending. Yeah, um, R.I.P. Oh, uh, by the way, R.I.P. Becca, best gr- hashtag yeah. best girl. Give me some, uh, yeah. give me some uh, Rebecca love in the chat. Um, <laughs> best girl. Uh, I know everyone's like, oh, these Lucy, fuck the Lucy Simps. Becca, best girl. <laughs> Becca, best yeah. girl. Um, and I, I will die on that hill. And I, I, I'll <laughs> take the haters. I'll take them. It's fine. <laughs> I, I'll, but I'm, I'm dying on that hill. Um, no, uh, Becca. Okay, C- can we, can we just, Lucy? Can, 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 can we? Can we just be honest for a moment? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, our our boy David, he screwed up and chose the wrong girl. Can we be honest with that? Oh, you think so? You don't think so? Um, you think he should be with Rebecca? Yes, hundred ten percent. Maybe I need to rewatch it now that I've played the game. That could be my job for tomorrow. I'll rewatch <laughs> it. It's been, it's been a long time since I watched it, you know. But I did like Lucy. Obviously, I'm gonna like Lucy because she's got my name. So, well, okay, I I can't argue that. No. <laughs> I, I, I can't really debate that. Um, but it, in, you know, uh, all my all my jesting uh, and my uh, hyperbole aside, um, my, my the, the deeper issue is 
both, I, I think we can both agree, uh, David has some emotional trauma. Mm. I think that's, I don't think that's questionable. No. Uh, from what, when, as we get deeper in the show, Lucy explains her backstory and again, emotional trauma. And I think it's just an unhealthy relationship because you have two people who have unaddressed trauma issues that yeah. are together and, you know, um, you know, after he cybers himself all up, um, you know, again, try again, because of his trauma, he wants, you know, uh, it's a subconscious way for him to, you know, um, I can protect myself. I can protect those I love if I basically replace all my body with cyberware. Yeah. Um, like a you know, coping mechanism. Exactly. It's a, it's a, to me, it was a pretty clear coping mechanism. Right. Um, and you see him uh, like the last, like the episode before last where they're Lucy and David are in the apartment talking, their communication has broken down, uh, they're, 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 while I, I don't doubt they have emotional feelings for each other, they're, the rest of the relationship has clearly broken down. You know, yeah. she doesn't want to say, she doesn't want to talk about what's bothering her. He doesn't want to talk about what's bothering him. Uh, and as, you know, as we all should know from Relationships 101, uh, once the communication breaks down, then it's pretty much game over for a relationship. Sooner yeah. or later. Maybe, you know, not, not, not tomorrow, not the next day, but eventually the writing's on the wall. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I find just the way um, Rebecca is, uh, she doesn't seem to have nearly as much emotional baggage as Lucy. And that's why I think she would be a much healthier relationship for Dave. So okay. that, that's my two cents. Yeah, I'll have to rewatch and get back to you. <laughs> um, but uh, was there any other questions about that? Uh, no. Um, oh, uh, here, here's something from Madge. Uh, I felt as... The play, your playthrough progressed. Uh, you got more and more invested in the characters and didn't want it to end. Uh, how do you think the game did this so well? I mean, that's definitely correct. I think maybe in the... Maybe about a third of the way into Act 2 is when I really obviously became obsessed with all the different characters and the relationships. Whereas in the first half, I was a bit more... You know, I like Jackie and I was very emotional when Jackie died, but I, yeah, I definitely became more and more invested as it went on, which I kind of think is natural, you know, it makes, it makes sense. I think the game did a really good job of slow burning the romances, Mm -hmm. whereas, you know, sometimes in other games, it's very obvious, you know, this is going to be your romanceable character and you're going to love them straight away. But I liked the with all the different characters that you have the ability of romancing, there is a lot of build-up into that. I mean, I don't know about Meredith. I didn't actually romance Meredith, but I feel like that was a bit of a a whirlwind thing. (laughs) But, um, from what I've heard. But all of, like, the main characters that you become close with, I feel like you do a lot of jobs with them, and you really get to know them and spend time with them. And then it kind of naturally sometimes goes that way and you know other times as i experienced a few times in my own playthrough it doesn't go that way but i think that's just a credit to cdpr in general like they're really really good at writing character relationships and Mm -hmm. making them very three-dimensional and making them very not what's like the opposite of black like not black and white they're very layered and Mm -hmm. you know cause people to you know make podcasts and talk about it (laughs) because it's not there's no obvious answer you know people have their very different opinions and nobody's opinion is wrong really it's just how you feel in the game exactly yeah I mean, you know, I'll joke and, and, you know, rib people about Team Judy yeah. <laughs> slash Team Pan Am slash Team yeah. River slash Team Carry, blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah. You know, but in, in the end, right, it's a very personal experience. We're, we're, all, we're all wired differently. We're all going to relate 
and react mm-hmm. to these characters differently. Exactly, and, yeah. And, you know, what may be bread and butter for me may not be for you and vice versa. And that's fine. There's nothing, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. So mm-hmm. um, all, my, all my ribbing of you uh, in the very near future in this discussion, <laughs> uh, just everyone keep in mind that's what I actually said. And it's all in good fun <laughs> going forward. Uh, I, I totally, uh, I totally respect Lucy's decision uh, because, and you know, as we should all respect each other's uh, for who, you know, who we, who we are connect with, um, mm-hmm. you know, who we emotionally connect with. There's no right or wrong answer to that. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, speaking of that, um, speaking of connections, um, out of all the NPCs. Uh, you met. Who was your number one favorite one in the entire game? Um, Everyone. No, there's no. Doesn't have to be a, a love interest. Doesn't have. Yeah. Any NPC that you met. Um. There's so many that I really like. R- River is my favorite. Like oh, I, goodness, I have to be boring. Go. I have here to be boring. Here we go. Here I, we I, fucking I go. River. But there's. A lot of other honorable mentions. For example, I really like the Perales couple. They were interesting. They were so weird. And well, well their whole storyline was super weird, which, you know, kind of um, got me stressed. Mm-hmm. But I really, really liked <laughs> Well, as you should, because that was pretty fucked up. Yeah, it was really crazy. Um, I love them too. I love Wakako. I think she's really cool. Yeah, she was. Um, I-, I wish it was I more love, of her. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I love Maiko. I think even though I don't like her as a character, I think she's kind of iconic. Like oh, she, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you you want to strangle her with your bare yeah. hands, but mm-hmm. as a character, fascinating. Yeah, super cool. Love um, Takemura. I really, really got to love him towards the end of. I don't know if it was the end of Act Two. Yeah, mm-hmm. where you do the sniper mission at the parade. Love mm-hmm. that whole thing. Um, but yeah, River's got to be my my favorite, you know. But the only thing I don't like about River is how I feel like, you know, my, earlier you mentioned like the crunch and how the the end of the game kind of feels a bit more rushed. Like I felt like River's storyline was rushed. Oh, one hundred ten percent, no doubt in my mind. Even in comparison to Judy and Panam, who've got these really long, like you've got so much you can do with Judy and so much you can do with Panam. Um, there's not actually that much to do with River. Like you've got a few jobs, you know, with like the the farm one and then the one where mm-hmm. you go and romance in. But there's nowhere near the amount of content as you get with the others. And it felt like it was um, it was rushed. And there, you know, I this is a side a side track here. But just as I got towards the end of the game, I noticed more and more like little glitches and nothing game breaking but you know weird glitches where people mm-hmm. were standing where they shouldn't have been standing and um i noticed that more and more as i got towards the end of the game and i think that's just where that crunch kind of becomes obvious <laughs> um but yeah river for sure river uh M. Jags is calling you out with your quote and i've heard you on stream say this a few times i don't want to choose any of these options <laughs> when it comes to dialogue yeah. Yeah, sometimes. I've heard you say that more than once. Yeah, sometimes I look at the options. I'm like, V, you're being a dick. Like, I don't want to say any of these things. <laughs> Especially with River. Like, sometimes when you rock up and you see River, the only dialogue option you have is, I don't think things are working out with us. And I was like, why would I say that? <laughs> Why do I only have that option? <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I agree. Um, and it's funny because it Carrie's story. Story, which I don't, I don't know how far you got with Carrie. Oh, I did that. I finished it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's a the, he even uh, he got a fair amount of depth. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's all it's obviously all Act Three, um, but I still feel like you got loads to do with him, and it. I think in terms of how many jobs there are, it's it's quite a lot. But because I did it all in one stream, because I wanted to get it finished before the point of no return right i i didn't feel as long but god yeah carrie's quests were were interesting when it, it felt like you got to really go on a journey with carrie because he was in such a bad way when you meet him and oh, then uh-huh. at the time by the time you blow up mm-hmm. the boat <laughs> he just seems in such a better place and it's you know it's pretty, it's a pretty cool story 
It is. So, um, for yeah, an 80 year old guy, know. it's a pretty yeah, good Yeah, I mean, story. he's killing it. Yeah. Okay. And I, I got to say this because I said this on Twitter and uh, I, 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 I took some heat for this. But <laughs> I, I'm going to say this for all the rogue and all the carry simps out there in the world. Uh-huh. You, are, you are going after like an 80, 90 year old person. I know. It's they so are, funny. They, <laughs> I mean, I, I, said, I said this on Twitter. I was like, uh, I did not realize there were so many people into grandma and grandpa fetishes <laughs> since until I started playing this game. But they uh, look so good, though. No, and, and, and yeah, and I know that great. that's what they say. Oh, you know, and hey, plastic surgery in 2077 does amazing work. I'm not denying yeah. that. I'm not disputing that. You know, uh, yeah, they, do they look good for being 80 plus years old? 110%. No doubt in my mind. <laughs> but. You are still fucking an 80 plus year old. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yep. Does that make me wrong? Am I wrong? No, no, I think you're you're fully correct. Um, I still love Rogue though. Oh no, no. Rogue Rogue is cool. Rogue is cool. Yeah. Uh <laughs> now I, I I you know, uh you know, playing as Johnny, mess around with her, that's fine, whatever, because that's Johnny. You know, that's that's yeah. not technically V. So whatever that 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 didn't bother me. But would my V go after Rogue? Uh, I don't know about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. If my vote, my my Rogue is into grandpa grandma uh, fetishes. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. Um, yeah, that's fair enough. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can just imagine the comments or the the from that from from that whole little tirade of mine. Um, <laughs> Those, those uh, Johnny and I mean those uh, Rogue and uh, Kerry Simps, they're they're pretty hardcore. They're they're very protective. They're very protective. You gotta watch just, your uh, back. Man. You do. You do. They they don't play around. Um, oh God, I told you we we're going to we were going to go off the rails at some point. <laughs> um, where where were we? Uh, uh, oh oh yes. So now you said you. Did not get into the um, game until later on. You know, you went to that event, and after it already released, and probably what sounded like over a year after the release. That's yep. kind of when you. Yeah. So you really weren't involved or followed any of the controversy around. It, I'm assuming. No, or very I mean, little I was, of it. Yeah, very little. I was aware it was happening, and I knew what was going on. But um, I was not in the thick of it as such. No, I heard them. One of the things they ta- they did when we were at the CDPR event is they had put together this whole video, which was so good. They like interviewed a lot of the staff, and it was really cute because they did. You know, what's been your best moment working for CDPR? Da da da. And then it got to the question, what was your worst day working at CDPR? And everybody talked about the Cyberpunk release, and it was just heartbreaking watching them mm. talk about you know it was there was a dev it was a dev that was right, doing right. these these interviews and you know it's so it was so sad honestly i actually made me tear up a little bit because they had put their life into this game for probably like eight years right. and due to the powers that be above which nobody has any control over right it got it got pushed out and it wasn't it wasn't no, it wasn't on the. It wasn't on the, on the shoulders of any. It was on the shoulders. Sorry, I mean it wasn't the fault of any of the developers, but they ended up being the ones that took the heat, and it was just really heartbreaking yeah. to to see. So that was kind of the first time I really saw the extent of how serious it was. Yeah, uh, and I think that deserves to be reiterated. Um, you know, and, and this is not just for CDPR, but all game developers. Um, the people in the trenches, the people who are actually programming, developing the systems, animators, artists, and everything, uh, there are people above them. They're not the ones setting dates, setting release dates, setting yeah. expectations, setting s- timetables. You know, they just say, hey, do this, and this is how much time you have. And yeah. they do the best they can. And exactly. sometimes that's enough time, and sometimes it isn't. And when it isn't, then... This is, you know, what happened with Cyberpunk's release is what happens. Mm-hmm. Uh, when, you know, when management is not listening to... And again, this is me develop, defending the developers. Yes. Uh, many reports came out saying the developers said we need 12 to 18 more months. 
Yeah. They were explicit about that, and the management team just thought they would magically be able to make it happen at the timetable they gave them. And, you know, if you want to, I mean, is there blame? Absolutely. But it is not, uh, you know, at the, you know, the, 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 the folks in the trenches, you know, they yeah. should not get your ire. And again, this is true for um, any game that this happens to, you know, the, the, you know, and they're good soldiers. Most all developers are good soldiers and they will take all the hits, even though they weren't the ones making the final decisions. Yeah, I mean, they're the ones on Twitter who are, you know, very active with the community. So they ended up being the ones that got, you know, the heat from people on Twitter and all that shit. So, yeah, it's it's really horrible to see. But I yeah. think they've really, I think they've pulled it around spectacularly. Uh, Faye says, plastic surgery is the key for the future. And that's why people need to get that Kim Kardashian bod in 2077. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Matt says, uh, my question for Gothic, you interviewed a lot of the voice actors during the game. How did you feel? i not sure. Could you elaborate what you mean by that? How did I feel? Uh, I'm not sure I exactly understand what you mean by that. And I will definitely get back to you on that. Um, so, so for the most, so generally you, you, so by the time you got into it, most of the controversy, most of the drama had subsided. Oh, fully, yeah, because I started, there was a big update that I spoke about earlier that got released probably around the same time as Edge Runners, and I didn't start playing the game until a few months after that, so largely the game has been bug-free for me, apart from a few, like, funny ones, yeah, which have yeah. just been, uh, you know, a little bit of a laugh, but not game-breaking. Right, exactly. Uh, and, and you play on PC, correct? I do, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, even on real, I played, I played it, I started playing it uh, on day one, on PC. Uh, were there issues? 110%. Yeah. Did I encounter anything game-breaking with the main story? No. Now, were there some side missions, uh, like two or three side missions that were broken? Yes. But, but could I play from start to finish the main missions? 100%. Now... Uh, again, were there some issue? Were there um, visual issues, AI issues, so on and so forth? Absolutely. But yeah. was the game broken? Would I say? Would I classify the game as broken on PC? No. Um, mm -hmm. Now consoles. That's a whole other. That's night and day. Uh, I think yeah. PC issues we dodged mostly dodged the bullet. Um, consoles they got the short end of the stick. Um, should have just been left for consoles, right? It should have especially just been last kept gen. For the, especially yeah, it last should have gen. been kept for the for the new gen. Absolutely, um, hundred ten percent. Yeah, I, I and I was saying that. I, I'll tell you, I, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but I, I, I'm just saying when they released the twenty was it the 2019 trailer where yes. they showed the first person view of walking through the city, and you mm -hmm. saw. Dozens and dozens of people on the sidewalk and the cars moving and all this stuff. I swear to you, by the time that video ended and they were saying, yeah, it's available on PC and current gen and next gen and blah, blah, blah. And I thought, current gen, which today is last gen. Yeah. I was like, how in blue hell is uh -huh. what I just saw going to run on eight plus year old hardware? Yeah, exactly. That is like taking an eight-year-old PC and saying, mm -hmm. I'm going to run it on this. It just, it just made no logical sense to me. Now, I didn't have a console, so, you know, it wasn't my fight. But yeah, exactly. I found, I just, just, I found that suspect. Right out of, I, I found that suspect, you know, a year before launch. It didn't make any sense to me. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I wish I could say, oh, I was wrong. Unfortunately, I was right. Um, and... I, I, I totally agree, and they should have just done PC and next gen. And mm -hmm. I think half of their problems would now would it was it still not in the best release date? Yes, but mm -hmm. I think the people who was completely broken for would have been a non-issue. Yeah. Sorry, that's my little tirade about that. Uh, it just you know uh, I, again I uh, there are certain things. There are certain things in the community I think CDPR takes heat for that they shouldn't or is over-exaggerated. Yeah. But that is the one thing I will say 
they were misleading and they were untruthful and they shouldn't have done that. Mm. You know. Um, uh, Matt says, during the criticism of the game, uh, if not wrong, your voice actor interviews were during... Oh, yes. Uh, if you're asking, did I address that? Not really. Uh, again, that's like asking one of the one of the artists of the game, hey, why why was this released in the state it was? It was a, you know, the voice actors, they had no control of it. They were given a script to do the job, and that was it, you know? Uh, so we just talked about the characters. We went in depth about the characters, uh, the, their characters, the process, how they got involved in cyberpunk, a little bit of their backstory. Uh, I, I, I just did not feel it was fair to them to start talking about the controversy since they are just a gear in the machine and really low on the totem pole when it came to that kind of thing, if that makes sense. I think that's fair enough, yeah. Uh, I'm firm but fair, Lucy. I'm firm uh-huh, but yeah. fair. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so since you avoid that, let, let's talk a little bit about this. Um, the game systems, the game mechanics. Okay. Um, you know, some people say they're a little half baked. Certain certain mechanics. Other people think, you know, they're not groundbreaking, but they're all right. Where do you fall on where the actual game mechanics, game systems fall? It is the first uh, first player game. Um, I think that's the correct terminology where you're kind of seeing through the eyes of the person. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the first first player game that I've played in a long time, which I found really difficult to get used to. That's just a personal thing. It makes me feel travel sick. Um, I'm used to it now, but initially I find it really hard to get used to. Um, now that I've got to the end of the game, I would not like it in third person. I really appreciate that it's thir- that it's mm-hmm. first person. I think it's far more immersive. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of the combat, I did not learn it properly. I was very much hack and slash with my katana the whole way through that game. But I think exactly what Mjag said there, after Elden Ring, it was so hard because Elden Ring's very much like you cannot button bash in Elden Ring. You have to learn your buttons and you have to learn your moves. You have to learn your block because if you button bash, it punishes you. Um, So I was very conscious of that going into the game, but then I had learned so much Elden Ring that I got to Cyberpunk and I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. And I just ended up using the Katana the whole way through. And I only had the game on normal difficulty. So like I I didn't die that much. It wasn't it in the combat wasn't super difficult. I, I think like at my Adam Smasher fight, I died maybe twice. It wasn't like Elden Ring where you're dying like 40 times a night. <laughs> but um <laughs> I, I wouldn't be able to give like a proper review of the of the mechanics and the combat, especially because I didn't take it seriously enough. Like I like yeah, Katana Warrior. I just I just literally full send it every fight and hacked away with my katana until until they died. I used grenades a lot, which has become quite a funny thing on my YouTube where I just when I was trying to learn the game in the early days, I kept accidentally throwing grenades into crowds of people. Um, <laughs> I remember <laughs> watching that on YouTube. Yeah, that's funny. it's so bad. Um, menus, exactly. Yeah, I find the menus really difficult to get used to. But when I say I find them difficult to get used to, it is partially my fault because I don't put enough time or patience into learning them. So it's a bit of a it's it's half and half. It's it's I'm not I'm not putting the blame on the game there at all. It's just my personal experience. Um, yeah, exactly. Brian said I had Skippy. Skippy was a lifesaver for me towards the end of the game because I could just spray and it would hit them in the head. <laughs> Skippy is awesome. Skippy give me so some uh, give me some Skippy emotes in the uh, in the chat. Let's throw some Skippy love. I love that Skippy said Geralt lines as well. He goes, what Did now, he? you piece of filth? Yeah, he says Geralt lines. It's so funny. That's hilarious. That's he hilarious. He goes, what now, you piece of filth? Yeah, and now we got, the, yeah, we got the Skippy emotes going in chat. Yeah, awesome, so good. Awesome. <laughs> so yeah, by the end of the game, I was very much a Katana Skippy build. And, um, and that's fair. Men- that's, that's, yeah, that's... and driving, obviously, we've talked about my driving already, which I did definitely get better at, but 
It's because we don't drive in The Witcher or Elden Ring. We've got horses, you know, they're much <laughs> easier to control. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Matt Jazz says, uh, can you put into words how you feel about Johnny Silverham now that you finish the game? The short answer would be no, but to elaborate, <laughs> I feel like t as you got towards the end of the game, it, you got a lot more options with how to play Johnny as such. Like you got to be able to decide whether he was actually a changed man or not which i didn't expect i was thinking in the mid to early game you know johnny was very much doing his own thing and i didn't trust him one bit you know he very much wanted to kill v at the start as as and you then, shouldn't as you shouldn't yeah as That's you shouldn't affair. you shouldn't yeah and you know everyone we meet who is a friend or acquaintance of his says not to trust him, says he only <laughs> looks out for himself. But then as you get towards the end of the game, you get loads of choices as to how V treats him or how he actually reacts. You know, in the very end of the game, you get to pick what he does, which is not what I expected. I thought it would be V making a decision and then, you know, is Johnny going to betray us or something? I don't know. So that would have been interesting to see what he would have done canonically i guess i don't i don't know if he would really have been a friend to v if he got the chance to live you know he got the chance to live at the end but you have to choose whether he does or not and because i had been in my playthrough i was you know cosplaying johnny as a changed man and v's friend so he didn't live but i don't know what he would have done had the choice been his. Okay, fair. Um, we, you've kind of already addressed this, but just uh, out of courtesy, I just want to ask, because FaZe did ask this, and uh, if there's any further thing, anything further you want to expand on, um, says, uh, I do have to say, what got you into Cyberpunk and all the stuff and did you like the show Edge Runners? And what did you feel about when you first started Cyberpunk? In what role? I mean, you, you kind of already covered some of that, but was there anything further you wanted to add to that? Yeah, I mean, I talked earlier about how I got into it after meeting the the Cyberpunk people and Edge Runners. I, I mean, I just watched Edge Runners when it came out, and we did a, a, a short podcast episode about it because we really enjoyed it. Um, I do feel like I want to rewatch Edge Runners now that I've played the game, and I'll hopefully notice any wee Easter eggs they put in there for game players. Um, yeah, I mean, other than that, that that's all that got me into it. Really, was the 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 event and meeting the people. All right, now, now, LJR, we need to <laughs> um, we need to get serious for a moment. Okay, let's go. Let me have a sip of wine here. Hang on. <laughs> You're going to need it. In fact, okay. um, uh, let's take a sip together. Cheers. Cheers. Ah, all right. Let's get ready here. Let's get ready. Uh, <laughs> we're going we're gonna to get into it now, guys, and chat. Um, buckle up. Buckle up. <laughs> so, um, it's fair to say you're a river simp yeah so um why do you hate pan am well first of all i don't <laughs> let it be known that i tried to romance I'm, everyone <laughs> i'm being for those who don't know me i'm being a troublemaker right now it's, it's all in good fun but no seriously oh, yeah. why do you why do you hate pan am and um why, why do you hate judy that's really what the real question that i need to ask i i do think it needs to be said on record that i did try and romance everyone in the game <laughs> and okay to, just to be honest me so maybe you need to ask pan am why does she hate me <laughs> <laughs> To be honest, if you uh, please do watch Lucy's playthrough on YouTube. She is a little slut. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> um, that's just kind of how it worked out. Uh, but I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead please. Yeah, I mean, the, the Judy romance was great. And it was. it's funny how the game worked out for me because I think I had gotten 
to the middle of Act 2 or whatever. And I was like, when are these romances happening? Like, we've been flirting around the idea of River and we've been flirting around the idea of Judy and nothing's happening. Um, and then it both of them happened in the one stream. The Judy romance happened first. I and I didn't know... Do you remember? Yeah, okay. So Judy calls me up and invites me to go scuba diving and everyone started putting sussy motes in the chat. And I was like, okay, this is it. This is going to be the thing. And it was my first romance option. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. And it was great. It was such a... It's such a beautiful story. You I, know, the scuba diving is so beautiful. And she tells me about song. her... Yeah, yes. it's beautiful music. Oh and Wonderful. Judy tells you all about her childhood. And it's it's honestly so beautiful. And, like, Judy is a sweetheart. And then almost immediately, like, it was almost, co like, comical how quick it all happened. Like, we just finished the Judy quest. And obviously at the end of the Judy quest, she's like, you should move in with me. And I was like, Jesus Christ, okay. <laughs> so then River calls. And I was like, fuck, like, if River had called first, I probably wouldn't have done the Judy romance. But okay, like, we'll go and do it. And at this point as well, I wasn't certain, you know, in The Witcher 3, if you romance Yen and Triss, you get punished for it. Yes. You know, you get, you know, you get nobody in the end. So I was, I, I, at this point, I wasn't sure if Cyberpunk had something similar at play where the paths would cross at some point and you would get in trouble if you had one boyfriend and one girlfriend or two girlfriends or whatever. So I was a bit apprehensive when River called up as to what to do but then i just thought i have to go for it and like i wanted to play the whole game so i was like just saying yes to everybody <laughs> so but yeah river was always my number one choice uh it was funny because i i think what we we chatted um about this and uh you know a few weeks back uh and you said uh you said you saw Pan Am actually as like the your B, uh, like a BFF sister, and yes. that's why you had a bit of sometimes like like sisters like siblings. Sometimes yeah. you have a little contentious relationship. Oh yeah, I feel like the female V relationship with Pan Am is fully like a sisterhood. Like you're past the point of being best friends, and it's like like exactly like you said, a sister, which is why you you can argue and then in the next second it's you know she would die for you so I, th I think that's fully the relationship and that's why i really love pan am as a character like she's a ride or die best friend oh a a absolutely uh whether you romance her or not i, mean, I tried you... <laughs> <laughs> i know i remember i remember when uh during the uh sandstorm and you, yes, were in, yes. you were in the abandoned house together. You made a move, girl. You made a move. I did, yeah. She politely declined, which yes. is fine. I respect that. Right, right. Um, but uh, A for effort. Yeah, you know, thank you. I got to give you A for effort. Um, uh, but yeah, but you know, I, I, I like the fact that, you know, not... Not everyone in the game, and because I have played some, you know, some some CRPGs where everyone's bi, no right. matter what gen, no matter what uh, gender uh, your 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 player character is, uh, if you try to romance, romance these people, they'll be into you. And right. I like the fact that these people have set personalities, set preferences, and you know, it doesn't always work out, just like in real life. You know? Yeah, I think, again, it's another clever move by CDPR to make the game more replayable as well, because I know so many people that played as male V and then couldn't romance Judy and were mm -hmm. like, OK, well, I'm going to have to play the game all over again because I want to romance Judy, <laughs> so I have to play female V. <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's a smart move by them as well. But, yeah, you're right. It's more realistic. Uh Faye says, when the time came during the storm, the whole chat was like, make a move. <laughs> yeah, everybody knew I would get rejected as well, but everyone was like, go, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, so, uh, I, assume, I assume you are going to stream the expansion when it drops? Yes, I can't wait. So there's a part of me that... As you'll know, at the end of the game, it plops you back into the game just before you go into the embers to mm -hmm. meet Hanako. Mm -hmm. 
and at that point i was like well, i want to do yeah yeah so at that point i'm like oh, i want to do all the other endings now and see what happens but i didn't um so i think maybe when we get a release date for phantom i keep trying to say phantom menace but it's not that. It's phantom <laughs> oh Liberty. my god i know I'm please do let it be better than phantom menace please <laughs> yeah, please so um maybe when we get a release date for phantom liberty the week leading up to it i might do all the other endings and then stream phantom liberty when that comes out nice i'm definitely looking forward to that uh, sam i can't wait i know uh, I, I unfortunately I I, I don't I, I'm not on Twitch a whole lot, so when I do go on, unfortunately, a lot of times you're not. You know, uh, it's it's just not. We've got uh, big time difference as well, don't yeah, we? So yeah, yeah, we have like uh, yeah, we have like a five six hour time difference. So yeah, um, I'm I'm not on. I, I like to try to you know support um, my cyberpunk uh, comrades in arms and who are who are streaming. Um, you know, when I can, but uh, unfortunately I don't make it to Twitch as much, uh, as, uh, I'd like. Uh, Brian asks, have you seen the trailer for the DLC? I have, yes. Idris What's Elba is looking so good. I think, you know, it's, it's leaving a little bit, it's not giving you too much at the moment. All I kind of know is that it's a spy agency of some sort and Idris mm-hmm. Elba is the top, top bloke. I mean, he's awesome. Like, Idris Elba is so good. So I just think they keep getting these amazing names. Like How Keanu did we Reeves get Heimdall? We got How fucking we get Heimdall him? for Phantom Liberty. Someone explain to <laughs> how the fuck that happened. So, I mean, it's, I'm, I think it's going to be amazing. I'm just curious as to how it will fit into the story. Yes. Uh, I, I mean, I'm pretty confident, um, you know, it's going to take place before you go to Ember's. Yes, it has to. Clearly, it has to. Clearly. Do you want Johnny? In? Do you think Johnny will be in it? Like, have they got Yeah, Keanu yeah, they, they showed yeah. a couple of clips of new dialogue. They said Keanu's coming back. Now, this is this. All right. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know anything about the DLC, um, uh, we are going to get into some spoiler territory, some s- potential spoiler territory. So, uh, FYI, um, if, if you want to skip ahead uh, a few minutes. Um, the. While he they they have confirmed Keanu's coming back to voice some more lines, I think it's a form of the most part a minor role. Uh, yeah. The rumor is there's a new engram that oh. basically overwrites Johnny temporarily for this mission. Oh no way! Okay, that's weird. So I think you'll have Johnny at the beginning, at the yes. end, but for the majority in the you know the chunk in the middle is not going to be Keanu. And I think interesting. I, so that that's my hypothesis. I could certainly be wrong, but from yeah. all the information released, that's what I believe is going to happen. Well, that's kind of like the Witcher Three DLCs, isn't it? Like you can play them at any point of the main story. You can play them before the Isle of Mist. You can play them once you finish the whole main game, mm-hmm. because none of the main characters, apart from Geralt, obviously, are in it. Like there's no Siri, there's no Yen, there's no Triss. Which apart that, from at that the upset very me about the that upset me about the dlc the yeah, uh, yeah. Not, not the first one the 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 stone heart i like hearts that of was in, stone yeah hearts of stone that was integrated with you know with the Geralt doing his thing and that that i was fine with that uh the the whole but the uh what you might call it what's the the big one there blood uh, and wine blood and wine i it's like none of the npcs you've built relationships with are around until the very end. Until the very Until end, your lover, yeah. Come, whichever lover you have, and and it's mm-hmm. like, I mean, I Blood and Wine is great. I loved it. I'm not saying it's certainly not bad at any level. And I, you know, from, from up behind the curtain, um, you know, reason I, I understand why they did it that way. But as a player, I would have liked you know a little bit more interaction with the. The characters I've been through, you know, I I bet, you know, I've had this uh, amazing story arc with. Yeah, yeah, that's fair enough. Um, but getting back to cyberpunk, so minus River, mm-hmm. uh, which NPC did you feel the most connection with? Um. Number one, right after River. Oh, Johnny. Okay. Fully. Why yeah. is that? Why is that? Well, I think you spend most time speaking to him, and you get 
you get to know his character and I think you never quite know him fully. And then obviously sometimes he lets his guard down. You know, I, I, I love the moment where you visit his grave in the Porsche. And uh, that was emotional. Yeah, super emotional. And you, I think you really got to see his character there. And then obviously he wants to go out with Rogue, which is lovely. And But I love that, you know, he always keeps you on your toes and you never really know what he's going to do next. When, at what point in the story, uh, may, I mean, not, not, not including the side missions, because obviously side missions you can do at basically any time, but mm. in the main plot, at what story beat uh, did you get to that you actually realized, okay, Johnny isn't trying to fuck me over anymore? Um, when, did, when did that revelation click with you? I did like that moment that I just talked about where you visit his grave. I don't know if that's mm-hmm. main main story or side story. Um, there's also a couple of moments where he saves you. And it's it's hard to know because it's in his interest as well to save you, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so, but there's a few moments where you let him take control. Um, and the first time, obviously, he goes crazy and, you know, goes on a wild night out. But he had his reasons. And... <laughs> Every time after that, he was relatively sensible. Um, I just, I just think he's a great character, and I can't even now. I, I can't make my mind up about him, which I think is what makes him great. Okay. Um, what did you think about his wild night out? Hilarious. I just thought V's going to be so pissed. That's what I thought too. <laughs> yeah. No matter what V, no matter what kind of character you play as V, there is no, there is no V I can imagine that would be happy. No way. Once he realizes what he, what what happened to him or her. Yeah. No, it was just fully off the rails. I mean, that he crashed a car. It was was chaotic. (laughs) But it was great. It was great. It was a great story. Oh my god. It was fun. Yeah. Um, so, uh, what, uh, let's just wrap up here and let me just ask you for the expansion, besides the new subplot, what are you hoping is going to be included in the expansion? What would you like to see? I would like to see, well, it's kind of similar to what you said about the Witcher 3 expansions. I would really like to see integration with the characters that we already know. So that would that would mean it would have to be set before Embers. Um, I would love it to involve, you know, my boyfriend, the private investigator, River. It sounds oh like God. he would be oh incredibly my God. helpful. Here we, go. He would be Here so we helpful. fucking go. Me, the new super spy with Idris Elba and P.I. River. It sounds like it's right up his street. <laughs> P.I. River. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god um okay uh is there any uh besides uh, i i really think and I, I to follow up with what you're saying uh and i'm in a, you know being serious for a moment yeah i do agree um i think they need it, it's going to be considered a huge misstep um and a big swing and a miss if they don't include more romance interactions. Yeah. I, 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 it, everyone, everyone wants that. Um, I see that on Twitter. I see that mm-hmm. on the message forums. I see yeah. that on the <laughs> socials. I mean, it, it's just clear. There's no way they cannot. Oh, we didn't know. There's just no way yeah. they can play that card. So... Now I understand probably getting these voice actors back just for <laughs> fucking <laughs> rom- additional, you know, lovey, lovey, kissy, kissy uh, dialogue. Probably not the most economically reasonable choices, but on the flip side, um, you know, they've made, you know, uh, Cyberpunk, while it had its missteps... You know, had its uh, mismanaged launch. Um, on the most conservative, con- most conservative estimates uh, I've seen, 
it's made about three hundred million in profit, and wow. that's the most conservative I've seen. Yeah, three hundred million. You can hire. You can bring these fucking voice actors back for oh, fully an, an hour's worth of work. Let's just. Be I think they honest. would. Yeah, I think they they would. Yeah, and I mean, if we get the opportunity to romance Idris Elba, they're going to see their profits go through the roof tenfold. Faye says that's a lot of eddies yes yes it is Faye. <laughs> yes it fucking is um uh again uh madge actually asked a question related to the dlc you kind of hit on it but if there's anything else you want to add it says uh how do you hope the dlc will enhance your experience of the game overall i think it's gonna be really interesting playing a dlc because i've never like any game that I've played that has had an expansion or a DLC, I've always played it all as one. You know, The Witcher 3, when I played it, both expansions were already out. So I played it as part of my whole experience, like initial experience. So I'm really excited to see how this will play as somebody who's already experienced the story. So I know how it ends and I'm curious as to where it will fit in. And I would love it to see it bring in some even more new players who can experience that, you know, as part of their first playthrough. Um, but yeah, I'm just excited to see another kind of story in the city and see where that takes us. As do I. Um, as do I. Um, and let's just, uh, to close out, let's briefly talk about uh, really going past the expansion. Let's talk about uh, Project Orion, a.k.a. Yes. Cyberpunk 2. Wow, what, I know. What are you hoping... Okay, first, there's a lot of debate in the community... Some yeah. are saying they want to see a continuation of Valerie slash Vincent. Yeah. And some are saying, you know, it's best best to leave it where, you know, where it lies and let's start a whole new main character. First of all, what is your thoughts on that? Uh, and B, about Project Orion, what would you like to see in it that isn't in 2077? It's... Funny because I think it. Well, I guess it all depends on what the canon ending is, and I've only finished one ending, and I I actually don't know what the other endings are. I'm trying to keep them out of my brain because I would like to experience them. For for personally. yeah, just exactly. Because uh, I because again I, I miss you a lot on uh, Twitch. I can't see you. Yeah. I don't. I've only seen you live once or twice. Uh, I so I basically follow you through YouTube and uh, Miss uh, LJR has not updated her YouTube in quite some time. I know. Um, so I'm really be behind. Glad to know I have so two what ending did we get first dude. of all? So I, I need um, to know what ending did we. So it's called the Path of Glory or the Sun ending. Oh, the Sun! Oh, wow! Interesting ending. Interesting. So ending. Okay. at the at okay. um. Uh, what, what was it? There's a decision you make with Johnny. I yes. decided to let Johnny take the wheel, and he yes. and he and Rogue went to Arasaka Tower together. So R.I.P. Rogue. Yeah, yeah, R.I.P. Rogue. It was a really, really sad moment, and but we got to kill Adam. Smasher and As it was he very cool. As it was a very, very cool way to go out. I find that decision really difficult to make, like how to go about the it Arasaka is. Tower right. um, mission, and I. I really didn't know what to do, but I, and in that moment, I was feeling like Johnny and I were close and we were getting, getting on. I thought, okay, I'm going to let him, I'm going to let him do it. So right. I got the path of glory ending. So I w woke up as V with river in the apartment. And then at the end, she goes off into space. <laughs> okay. Oh, does the uh, the 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 casino heist, the space yes, station yeah. casino heist? Yes. So I mean, I would love to do the casino heist, and yeah, and what MJag says, it kind of perfectly leads into the next game I'm going to play, which is Dead Space. So I'm going to cosplay <laughs> my Dead Space character as V. Nice. <laughs> nice. But um, I mean, the whole thing was that she was dying at the end, so I don't know how we come back from that. Right. I mean, no matter what ending. And this is really isn't a spoiler because it is what it yeah. is. Um, you know, V. You know, V is dying. Yeah. And yeah. some endings are a little bit more hopeful than others. Like maybe in the future, you know, you we can maybe find something. But generally speaking, when you leave V, the writing's on the wall. You got right. six months or less 
of, of, of time left. Um, and I think that is, for me, that is the epitome of the genre of cyberpunk. Yes. Cyberpunk is, isn't about unicorns and rainbows and happy endings. Yeah, for sure. And I think, um, I think some things are better left unsaid. And while, yes, we've grown attached to V, uh, we love our original character, um, you know, we want more of him I, uh, or her, I think, uh, I, I think there's something to be said about, again, talking about when we were talking about Edge Runners and if they do a season two, having an anthology, you know, same setting, same city, but just different characters. I, th- I think there's something to be about Cyberpunk 2 being the same thing, an anthology, a different main character, different yes. supporting cast, same city, same environment. Can even be play- And you can even have some major NPCs cross paths because that, mm-hmm. that would make sense. That would be logical, you know, have a rogue. Yeah. Um, have a Pan Am, what have mm-hmm. you? Uh, have a have a uh, Misty, what you know, whatever. Uh, some of the ones that we know most likely survived. Um, yes, you know, and and I, I think there's something to be said about that, and and just you know, because you look at the cyberpunk cyberpunk genre as a whole, there is never a unicorns and rainbow ending. No, and there's never a right choice and a wrong choice. Exactly. It's it's just shades of gray after shades of gray after shades yeah. of gray. Yeah. And that's fine. And that that's you gotta go in saying, you know, this is not gonna be the hero wins all and saves a damsel and lives happily ever after. And yeah. You, Where would be the fun in that? <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know, there are plenty that you know, you got Skyrim for that. <laughs> you know. <laughs> if that's what you want, you know. Um, and that's fine. And, you know, each genre has their own thing. And, and cyberpunk is about basically having the city or the corporations or whatever grind you down. And, and you know, it, it's, it's not as happy or go lucky, but it just, it, but you can still tell amazing stories in that context. And I, I, For think, sure. I think it would be, um, I think it would hurt the story of the of 2077 if they somehow you know oh magically v has a cure or whatever and yeah I, I, yeah i i think that would take away from the story me personally no i to- I no i totally agree yeah and it kind of rounded off even though it left it open-ended i think it rounded off the rest of the story pretty well there wasn't everyone's living their own life and doing their own thing but mm-hmm. there was no big overarching what if like i think it, you could you could leave that story where it is and that would be fine Right. Um, you know, it'll be really fascinating is if in Orion, um, in like near the end, you actually it takes place shortly before V dies, and mm. in one of the side missions, you actually meet the yeah the the canon V, uh, and like he or she gives you like the final mission and she knows gives you a job to do and, yeah and knows that this is uh to help you because this is they know they only have a few weeks of life you know that this is it and so yeah. that's their last they should do that 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 would be actually and i think that would be a great bookend right to that but you know what, what do i know how I'm many just... years have we got to wait? <laughs> Probably <laughs> five, six years. <laughs> Fun fact: uh, they are moving these after the after Phantom Liberty launches. They are moving the production. They, when they rev up the production of uh, Phantom, uh, not Phantom Liberty, uh, Project Orion, they're actually going to base Cyberpunk Two out of their new Boston office. Oh wow! Where I live. <laughs> oh no way oh amazing i live in boston massachusetts yeah oh cool oh well you have to get down there get these answers we'll see we'll see you know i don't know we'll see what happens we'll see what happens but uh yeah they're just uh neighbor they're just a neighborhood or so away from me oh very good yeah so that's uh yeah so which i it's interesting that they're moving the cyberpunk team to boston i yeah. find that interesting I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't want to read too much into it, but I'm just going to say I find that interesting. Yeah, I'd be curious to see how the conti- the company continues to grow for sure. Yeah, Faye says 
uh, I'm basically a night city. Basically, yes, exactly, yes, yeah. yes, face, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, so uh, just getting back, uh, you know, we we get we're drinking, we're getting on tangents here as people do when they drink. Um, but uh, just uh, to to wrap up, um, not main story, but either. Uh, game systems or uh, features you would like to see, uh, what would you like to see in Orion on a, on a features, uh, you know, game systems level? I think it would be cool for a few different, like I haven't actually put much thought into this, but I think it would be cool to see some different types of, um, what am I trying to say? Like vehicles, maybe? Because we do a lot of driving. It'd be cool if we had some sort of flight. Not for mm-hmm. just general travel, but it would be cool if there was some missions, um, you know, in some kind of flight-based combat. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe some... I don't know, because it depends on what characters there are. If there was other char- characters that we know, I'd love some more backstory on them. But uh, right now, I'm just kind of open to more stories, you know? No, that's right. Is there any, um, is there any sub um, hanging thread from twenty seven seven you'd like to see them explore in the sequel? Oh my god, yes, Perales. I want to know what happened to Perales. Yes. Obviously, I got a little short video message from him at the end of my game the other night. Um, what, what so... did, did you choose to tell him or not tell him about the hacker? I told him. Hacker? Yeah, I told him. I oh, told him. so he, so you got the paranoid reply? Yes. So he was like in a dark room and he was saying his wife was in on it, and he was like, <laughs> <laughs> it was just I have no idea what's happening with that guy. He's so going I down a dark to, rabbit hole. Yeah, I would love to know more about the Perales and how they how they ended up. Yeah, um, I don't think they. I don't think when they were designing this and, and, and you know, uh, figuring all this out, I don't think they realized how much the community was was interested and connected with the Perales story. Yeah. Because they, they didn't, yeah, there was like no follow-up, there's no, and and it seems like that's one of the side missions that most everyone says is amazing and they want more of. Well, it, it was, for me, it was just so immersive and, like, so stressful and tense. And then all of a sudden it was just, that's it. Yeah. And I know that's why they did that on purpose, but I was just like, oh, fuck, like, I'm never going to find out. That's just, that's <laughs> exactly. just the end. And exactly. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was, it was a funny way to end the story. It was. And lastly, last question. Um, besides your, uh, your love of river Mm. in, uh, Orion, what two NPCs, I won't say one, I'll give you two. What two NPCs would you like to make a cameo? I think it would be cool to see Panam. Mm-hmm. I'd like to see because I think it makes more sense that you would see her because they're you know nomads and they bop about. Mm-hmm. It would be cool to see her. Um, I'd like to see Hanako. What's she up to? Really? That was well, yeah. But I I, the only that. thing is, I, I felt like the Arasakas were such a core part of the story, and then with the ending that I chose, there was no real conclusion to that. Like to me, the crux of the story was. Um, Yoronobu killed his dad mm-hmm. and that was like the whole main part of the story and then at the end because I chose not to go with Hanako there was no there was no conclusion to that story so I, w- I would like to go back and do if I was going to do another ending I would do that one first because I want to know what happens to Yoronobu right. but uh, I would love to see Hanako I thought she even though I didn't like her that much I thought she was quite interesting um, I'd want to see Maiko and yeah, flaming crotch man, obviously. Yes, <laughs> yeah. I was going to point is that he, out. Is he okay? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, that, that's a great positive way to end this. So, um, LJR, uh, tell <laughs> everyone how to uh, find you, your socials. And I know you had a charity stream not long ago. So, uh, pimp everything out. 
Thank you so much for having me on. This has been really good fun getting to talk about cyberpunk for a few hours. Um, but yes, uh, like Peter said earlier, I am just about, well, I'm finished with my cyberpunk playthrough on Twitch for now, but I'm a little bit behind on my YouTube. I have the next couple of episodes scheduled for this week. So I don't know when this episode we're being that we're recording now is being released, but by this time next week, my full playthrough will be up on YouTube. It's about 18 episodes long. Um, and I'll be starting Dead Space and The Last of Us on Twitch next. Um, all of my social handles are at Lucy J. Robin. Um, and I also host my own podcast with my friend Brett. And we are currently discussing the TV show The Last of Us uh, weekly as that releases. Um, yeah, that's about it, really. I think I'm kind of uh, online all the time recently. I'm trying to do a bit of everything, which is good fun. I love gaming and talking about gaming so it's all it's all really good awesome and for everyone trying to find her that is again we'll have all the links in the description but uh, for those just listening it's lucy j robin robin with yes. a y yes so thank you so much lucy i've as again i have been looking forward to this for so long and uh i i'm so happy we got to chat uh you're an amazing person amazing streamer so fun to talk to so thank you so much oh thank you so much that's really sweet this has been a really good uh really good interview i've enjoyed uh talking with you a lot so thanks again for having me on it's been great fun Awesome. And thanks everyone uh, who's been participating in chat. Uh, MJAG, Soggy, Brian, FaZe, Nick. Uh, appreciate all the kind words, uh, all the questions. And uh, I am going to try to get some more uh, community folks here. Maybe even, uh, maybe even get a few people from CDPR. Uh, I am working yeah. on. Yeah. And, uh, you know, maybe... Uh, uh, maybe after the DLC releases, maybe uh, Gothic Wizard may be able to get some of the voice actors back that he's already interviewed for a follow-up interview. Maybe, maybe we'll see. We'll see. No promises, for it. but uh, you know, you know, we'll, you know, got a got a rabbit or two up my sleeve from time to time. <laughs> so uh, thank you so much for everyone for listening. Uh, thank again for Lucy and everyone in chat. And uh, remember to not only uh, take care of each other but certainly take care of yourself take have a wonderful evening bye chooms <laughs>